Here, what's up, Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers? It's Kush back at again with another New York Giants update video. I know y'all saw that new intro. <laughs> Let me know if you like it. There's still a couple of tweaks I need to add, specifically with when Andrew Thomas pops up. Uh, maybe I let him stay a little bit longer. I shall see. But I do like the general duration of it and how it turned out overall. Um, let me know if you guys like it. I spent like five hours on it last night from 11 p.m. all the way into 4 a.m. I am sleep deprived, but here I am giving you all that Giants content. Like I said, we are going to discuss... Or just, you know, talk about the three offensive coordinator finalists that we know about right now in Pep Hamilton, Mike Kafka, and Chad O'Shea. And if you guys have been following me on Twitter or, you know, you've been following me throughout my streams and other streams, which I, I have appeared on, you know that I do have a favorite out of these guys. Um, I do think that two of the three are certainly more qualified than the third. However, you know, this vid is not really all about that. It's for uh, kind of you guys to give me your opinion about it. In the comments down below so let's go over to the first person let's not waste any time it is pep hamilton the current offensive coordinator of the houston texans this guy is my favorite one i guess i'll start off with that and with good reason as well you could look at what he did with the texans alone this year as their offensive coordinator you could look what he did with davis mills a guy that i don't even know what round he was taking in that if you're telling me you expected Davis Mills to look like a competent rookie quarterback or <laughs> let's call it what it is some during some games he was out here throwing for like 300 yards and whatnot looking like a really good rookie quarterback. If you were telling me you were expecting that then you're lying to me. <laughs> you, I know you're lying to me. You know you're lying to yourself. He, what he did with a Texans offense that was supposed to be absolutely terrible and trash is amazing and just simply put amazing and a stroke of genius from the work of a coach um you know brandon cooks had a great season with a guy in davis mills and that was under pep hamilton it's it's absolutely crazy you know no deshaun watson no deandre hopkins people thought that the texans were going to be the worst offense in the league of course that turned out to be us in the jets but that's not a here nor there but that's not the only reason i like him no i don't like him just because he had great success with a bad team you look back at his coaching history and he's been a coach all the way back in 1997 is when he started as a quarterbacks coach for Howard but you look at let's let's skip down to 2010 for a second right and in 2010 he was at Stanford as a wide receivers coach he then got promoted the following year to their offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach I wonder who was the quarterback at Stanford during that time Oh, yeah, it was a guy named Andrew Luck. And I know Andrew Luck has retired. I'm sure some of y'all forgot about that man. But when he was in the NFL, from a rookie all the way up to his last year, he was one of the best quarterbacks that played in the NFL. He was top 10, possibly even top 5. This man came back in 2018 and took his team to the playoffs after they missed it because of his injury the previous year. Andrew Luck is the real deal. And not only that... He followed Andrew Luck into the pros in 2013. He was the Colts offensive coordinator and he was their offensive coordinator until 2015. He's basically worked with Andrew Luck for like the entirety of Luck's healthy career. And he could be credited with, you know, developing him and giving him a lot of the skills that he has as a quarterback today or not today, I should say. But this guy is the guy that made Andrew Luck. You know, we're, we were out here expecting Ken Dorsey, the guy who made Josh Allen. This is a pretty damn good, um, you know, replacement isn't the word, but option after not getting Ken Dorsey and, you know, Dorsey staying with the uh, Bills. Then after that, he did move around a little bit, bounce around a bit um, after the Colts. He uh, was with the Browns in 2016 as an assistant coach and quarterbacks coach. He went back to the college game Michigan from 2017 to 18 as assistant head coach and passing game coordinator. Spent some time in the AAF as the DC Defenders, or is that the XFL? The DC Defenders head coach and general manager came back to the NFL um, that same year that the XFL got canned and immediately made a uh, another quarterback or helped develop another great quarterback in Justin Herbert. He was with the Los Angeles Chargers as their quarterbacks coach in 2020 and justin herbert was the guy that had, out of all the rookie qbs in 2020 had the best season and wasn't even close i made a joke about it in my skit this past week saying that pep hamilton is the guy that helped out justin herbert that coached justin herbert and justin herbert is a guy that's so good that you still got some nfl fans believing he's better than joe burrow 
even though Burrow is taking his team to the Super Bowl. I'm not saying that's not true or whatever, but it kind of goes to show you the type of quarterbacks that he's worked with and worked to help develop early on in their career. That's that's the biggest and my most favorite trend here, early on in their career. And then, of course, he was with the Texans this past year as their passing game coordinator and quarterbacks coach. So I misspoke when I said um offensive coordinator it was passing game coordinator but that once again directly relates with david davis mills right so i don't know i feel like this guy is my favorite candidate for a lot of good reasons he's worked with great qbs and even with the terrible qbs he's worked with he's managed to get good production out of them and he's been a coach for a long time as well which is something i'm really really want um for this offensive coordinator position especially since brian dayball said he might not be the one calling plays so if he's not the one calling plays i prefer to have somebody that did that at some point in their career before then we go over to the next person it is mike kafka from the chiefs he's a name that's kind of gotten popular in the recent weeks um uh, i remember talking about him as well he was gonna be my next option if dorsey went back to buffalo which he did but also if for some reason pep hamilton stayed with the texans which thank god he's not staying with the texans um and mike kafka is a much more new coach obviously a lot of these guys that work under andy reed or um you know sean McVay and whatnot they get a lot of attention except for eric Bieniemy, it seems but mike kafka he was also a quarterback um from 2010 all the way to 2015 he was a quarterback in the nfl and uh, mostly he spent his time on the practice squad and whatnot but you know he he was there and that counts for something he started as a coach the very next year in 2016 at northwestern as a graduate assistant then went to kansas city where he's basically stayed since as a offensive quality control coach in 2017 the quarterbacks coach from 2018 to 19 and then this uh past two years 20 and 21 he was both the quarterbacks coach and the passing game coordinator you're also noticing a um a trend here in the type of guys that the giants are interviewing quarterback coaches passing game coordinators because that's really where we struggled the most um a run game not to put down any run game coordinator or whatnot um you know you look at sam fran their run game coordinator and mike mcdaniel definitely does a good job over there oh no he's their offensive coordinator now but you you get the idea i'm saying not to put down the run game coordinator uh but the pass game coordinator is is it's definitely the bane of the giants existence right now more than the running game i feel like you know once you get a go to a line the run game could fall into place just fine and so there's an obvious reason why this guy is a very uh popular name for an offensive coordinator job right now it's because he worked with patrick mahomes uh need i say more um and honestly i don't have much else to say about mike kafka he's a very recent coach uh he's not necessarily somebody that has an experience that i was looking for that i was mentioning earlier but his work resume is an impressive one albeit a short one so i could see the appeal that a lot of people have with him we could see or we shall see how he does as an offensive coordinator i would personally like it a bit more if he either a had that you know play calling experience in his past or b was the passing game coordinator for maybe a couple more years like maybe if this was like 2023 or 2024 some and he still had that title i'll be like yeah you know what let me let me get you um but i'll say this if this is the guy that we hire i would hope that dayball is the one that's calling the plays because of that experience that i mentioned and finally to the final guy my god i'm sorry bro listen whoever you are this is a scary look man you kind of look like lord voldemort and that man is of course chad o'shea and chad o'shea is the current wide receivers coach and passing game coordinator for the cleveland browns he's been in that position from 2020 to present he's also somebody with a extensive coaching history he's been a coach since 1996 uh, where he was a graduate assistant at Houston. And then we look at what he's done at the NFL level. Um, we start at 2003. He was actually with Kansas City as a volunteer assistant. Um, then a assistant special teams coach in 04 to 05. Moved over to the Vikings where he was an offensive assistant. And that's kind of where he began to build his rank up as an offensive coach. Uh, in 2006, offensive assistant once again. Uh, 07, wide receivers coach. 08, wide receivers coach and special teams assistant special teams coach then he was with new england for nine years where he got three rings and there he was a wide receivers coach the dolphins of an offensive coordinator and of course i already mentioned the browns as his current uh thing right here chad o'shea even though he has a bit more you know he definitely has a way better resume in terms of just 
experience, I guess you could say, than Mike Kafka. I do list them below Kafka, and, and maybe I'm running a Patrick Mahomes and this blind me a little bit, but I'm just not impressed that much by what he's done at the NFL level. Like, not to put him down or anything, I'm not impressed enough, I should say, for me to say, oh yeah, that's offensive coordinator material right there when you look at what he's did i mean wide receivers coach for the most of his uh career offensive coordinator once with the dolphins in 2019 that's about it he does i mean listen it sounds like i'm going against my own words because he does have play calling experience but it's not something that makes me want him as an offensive coordinator if that makes sense but you guys put your thoughts in the comments down below let me know what you think which one of these three guys do you like the best um and do you have a different opinion on chad o'shea we shall see but like share subscribe guys and i'm out hey guys thanks for watching thank you for checking out my channel the hub here on giants youtube make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you hear every time I put out a video like it share and subscribe and i'm out